most assuredly I say to you that the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and some will awake to the resurrection of life from done good and some will awake to the resurrection of condemnation who have done evil. You don't hate your mother, your brother, your father, your sister, your wife. You have to hate them. Even your own life. You are not worthy of being called a Christian. If you're not picking up your cross every day and following up in Jesus Christ, denying your flesh, you're not a Christian. Shame on the pastors today that aren't preaching. Shame on the pastors in the churches today that aren't warning the congregation that you have to repent of your sins. In the churches today, all we're teaching people is the grace of God and the remission of your sins that he died on the cross for your sins. But what they're not teaching people is that Jesus Christ said you have to repent of your sins. You must repent. You must stop your sinning. Don't tell me you can't stop sinning. Don't tell me you can't stop lying. Oh, if you tell me you can't stop lying, you're still a liar. I'm done with the repent. Don't tell me you can't stop looking at these women that are in all these bikinis out here. You can stop looking at these women. Jesus actually says that if your right eye is causing you to sin, pluck it out. How do you pluck your right eye out? You leave the beach. You probably these naked women out here, gentlemen. And for the women out here, the Bible says if you cause someone else to sin, Jesus actually said this. I quote him, if you cause someone else to sin, it would be better for you to tie a millstone, a large rock around your neck, and jump in the ocean. Now what do you think is going to happen to you when you tie a large rock around your neck and jump in the ocean, ladies? It's, just, it's not the life more abundantly that Jesus talked about. It's death. Yes, when you become a stumbling stone to someone by showing your body and these men look at you in lodge, you can't blame them for looking at you if you're out here in, in bikinis. I mean, get real. If the man walked in and saw you in your bra and panties, you would be upset. You'd call the police. So what's the difference of coming out to the beach in the bikini? I'll tell you what the difference is. There is no difference. You know, there's a spirit to it. There's a justification. It's worldliness. The Bible says that a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You need to be a friend of God. You need to be in agreement with God. You need to be in agreement with the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the Word of God in the flesh. And the Word of God says that a godly woman dresses modestly. Modestly. Doesn't show her body off. Same with the men. You may not have to look. You come out here with your big chest and you're like, whoa, oh, yeah, I'm the toughest out here. Women are looking at you and they're lusting after you. Yes. Yes. You have to repent of these things. You have to repent of your sins. The Bible actually says, no drunkard inherits the kingdom of God. No drunkard inherits the kingdom of God. You get any drunk? You think it's cool to do that? Oh, after work, I'm going to have a few beers? No, that's, that's a disobedience to God. Disobedience to God. You think you're a Christian? Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey me. First John says that if you say that you, you know him and you don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. You have to keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. Yes, you have to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you got to love your neighbor with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And this, gentlemen and ladies, is me loving my neighbor with everything i got to come out here on my day off and warn you about hellfire and how serious it is. Hell is real. It's not a joke. It's not a myth of the Bible. It's eternal. A lake of fire. Imagine all this water behind me being lava and then being thrown into it and there's no beach for you to crawl out of it. You're stuck in the lava. You're stuck in the lake of fire forever. It's eternal damnation. Yeah, it's eternal damnation. Actually, the Indians were made by Jesus, sir. So before the Indians were, he was. Yeah, Jesus Christ fulfilled. He, he fulfilled the righteousness of the law. He, he did it for all those who would obey him. He became the author of eternal life, as Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9 said, having suffered, him being on the cross, Jesus Christ became the author, don't touch my equipment, became the author of eternal life for all those who obey him. Oh, you say you believe in Jesus. You do want to believe that there's one God, James says. The demons who are condemned to hell, they believe in God and they tremble at God. Why? Because even Jesus 
I got the first to lay on for hire, so I'm just curious where you guys go. I'm not being, I'm not being like a jerk, I promise. I'm just curious. Are you gonna go or something? What? Are you gonna go to church? No, I do go to church. I mean, you gonna go, you wanna go to a, a different church or something? Mm -hmm. You wanna go to a different church? No, I'm just curious where you guys are from, like what outreach you guys are doing. We're just obeying God, but the Bible, like, you know, we said to do the work of an angel. Okay, so you don't like go to church? Sure, I go to church. Do you, do you go to church around here? Yeah. I'm assuming he's not with you guys? Mr. Haynes over there? The guy that's walking? Yeah. Okay, I figured he's Christian is because you're a little Christ, you're a disciple of Christ, you discipline your life after a 